And I'd like to consider this evening, slightly different way, the Lord's Supper as a picture, really, of the gospel. Uh, now, I know the Lord's Supper is only for those who are believers, but it is a very simple picture uh, of the gospel and of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. You may well have sat and watched uh, the Lord's Supper taking place with the simple giving of the bread uh, and then the giving of the cup uh, and with wine or grape juice uh, and the simple taking of these things, praying, giving thanks for them, remembering the Lord's death. And it is given to us as a picture, as a visual aid of the gospel of the Lord, the death of the Lord Jesus at the very core center of our faith. Now, I heard some years ago a man giving an evangelistic message in the open air on the Lord's Supper. And I'm sure my address would be much better if I could have remembered it. But uh, it was very interesting. Uh, and uh, hopefully it can present uh, to us all in a simple form, if you can think of what we would see in the Lord's Supper, what the gospel is. Uh, Paul here is giving instruction to the Corinthians how to rightly keep it. Uh, he reproves them for seemingly having the Lord's Supper as part of a general meal, but in that sense being disorderly. Uh, and uh, everybody bringing their own food, and somehow as part of that, the Lord's Supper taking place. But he is encouraging them or commanding them to have it separate to a meal uh, because it is important, it is serious, uh, it is holy. And so that those who had little would not be ashamed, uh, but all may come and partake equally before the Lord. Uh, and so he gives its fullest account. We can read, obviously, the accounts in the Gospels uh, of how the Lord instituted it, but here it is given in its fullest sense. And so I would just like, I won't go through all the verses, but if you bear with me, just take some of the matters that are spoken of. Uh, he begins, Verse 23, for I have received of the Lord, it was given to him by God, by the Lord Jesus, that which also I delivered unto you. I have passed it on as I received it from the Lord, uh, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And you can go back to the Gospels and all these details will be confirmed in different accounts in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and even also in a measure in John. But the first thing I'd like to say, it is a witness. He says, uh, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now I know we don't go into the center of town and uh, lay a table, as it were, for the Lord's Supper and keep it, in that sense, in the public eye. It is for believers. It is holy. Um, but it is a witness, a simple testimony uh, that we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and in what he has done on Calvary's cross. And it will be a witness of that until he comes again. And it has been a witness. Now, the church has not kept it perfectly, often sadly, corrupted. Uh, 
uh, and misused, but it has been kept from the first time uh, with the apostles through until today. And I'm sure by God's grace, it will be kept until the Lord returns and a testimony that Christ has died for sinners. Christ is willing to receive sinners and we trust in him and in his death for our salvation. And you hear, do you not sometimes, well, today, now, more and more foolish people scorning, mocking the gospel. Um, people say, oh, it's just fairy tales or whatever. Uh, but this uh, has been a testimony, and you can go back and look at church history uh, year after year, uh, week after week, really, almost. The Lord's people have kept this command of the Lord. Uh, the Muslims, do they not say, oh, Jesus did not really die. He just swooned. He didn't really die. And they believe in that sense he is still alive. But this has been a testimony a long time before Muhammad came, maybe five, six hundred years before the Christian church has been testifying uh, that they believe the Lord Jesus died and suffered and died for sinners and that our hope is in him. And it has been a gracious, a simple, a visual witness to all. And though, yes, it is and has been limited always in one sense uh, to those who are believers, those who are baptized uh, and have professed faith in Christ. Uh, yet, I don't believe the churches have always shut the door and said no one else may come and watch. Uh, it is not that they might partake, but that they can sit and watch. Uh, and in that sense, it has been a witness. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And it is our joy to do so. Uh, though it is a, a duty, there are only two of these uh, ordinances, as we call them, commands, uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper, uh, two simple visual ways, uh, and they both speak in a different way of what the gospel is and what is uh, salvation. But the second point, and this is very important, it is to be done in remembrance of the Lord. Verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We look back. We remember what he has done. Some people sadly will say, we reenact, we redo uh, what the Lord did on Calvary. Uh, but that is very wrong. It is not a, a, a reenactment, a, another sacrifice, but it is a remembrance of what the Lord Jesus did and uh, did upon the cross uh, on Calvary. Let me just turn to a few other scriptures. John 19, he declares his sacrifice is complete. Uh, is finished, John chapter 19 and verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Or you could translate it, it is complete, it is perfected, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. His work, his sacrifice was done. He would not do anything more, he would rise again on the third day, never to suffer again. But his work was complete. He had suffered and died upon the cross, and he had borne those dreadful sorrows and pains, not just in his body, but in his soul, for those for whom he would suffer. And he would once suffer and die. Let me just read, I uh, don't have to turn to it, uh, Hebrews 9, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered 
to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And uh, again, he, he says uh, the same in uh, chapter 10 uh, as he goes on, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. We look back and we remember what the Lord has done, because when he suffered and died on the cross, he did everything necessary for our salvation, the salvation of lost sinners. He bore that punishment for our sin that, he, that we could never bear. He uh, bore it and he bore it all away. And so we can have confidence that that is so. He rose again the third day to show that he had finished his work. He borne it all away. So everybody who comes to him knows that we receive a full forgiveness and a free forgiveness for everything that we have done wrong and are accepted wholly in him. It is a remembrance. We remember what he did and the bread and the wine or the grape juice is simply a reminder of his body and of his blood, his body broken and of his blood shed uh, so that we can be forgiven and saved. Uh, it is a remembrance. It is a remembrance that his death was not for himself alone, but it was for others as uh, the verses uh, in 1 Corinthians say, uh, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Uh, that, uh, and this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This, he broke his own body, let his body be put upon the cross uh, and put to death, not for himself, but for others for all who would trust in him. Uh, and so it is broken, his death. He did not need to die. He did not deserve to die. He was perfect uh, in every part. He, he, death is the, uh, the reward for sin, but he never sinned. So in, he had no need himself to die, but he died in the place of others uh, and anybody uh, is welcome to come and to put their trust in him and he will receive them and find that he has borne their punishment and suffered and died in their place. He speaks of his body, his own life being given for the life of the world. Uh, John 6, let me read some of the verses there. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That anybody in all the world may come to him and find in him the bread of life uh, and may, uh, as it were, by faith, come to him and receive him. As their saviour, he goes on, uh, verse 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Not meaning that anybody who eats the bread and drinks of the cup has eternal life, but they are simply symbols, pictures of the Lord. And if we believe in him, we will have life because he has given his own life for us. Uh, it is a simple picture that God is holy. This may not be the, the prime uh, picture, but as we read here, it is to be taken seriously. Uh, 
the, the latter verses, verse 27, wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation or not damnation as we might understand it but judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body but it is a holy matter our god is holy and if we are to approach him we must approach him by faith with our sins forgiven and believing that he is there it it is not too hard to to follow it is that we are to come as believers, it is for believers, but and we are to come as believers, uh, searching our hearts, asking the Lord for forgiveness, and he will graciously receive us. But it is a reminder that he is holy. Uh, and uh, we're not, Paul is essentially saying, we're not to treat it lightly or flippantly, as they had been doing, and as had, as a consequence of which he says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Uh, but God is to be approached as one who sees all, who knows all, uh, who is holy. Uh, and a simple reminder uh, of that. It is uh, also a reminder that he will return. It's, he says he do show the Lord's death till he come it is a reminder that he will return and when he returns he will come for his people the, those that trust in him and he will take them to a much bigger supper the marriage supper of the lamb uh, that in heaven heaven is pictured as a feast that will go on and on and on uh, and uh, all who trust in the Savior will be taken there and be part of that feast. And the Lord's Supper is but a little uh, reminder that that is yet to come and will be so that there we will sit down with the Lord. Uh, there in one sense, he will be with us uh, in, in, in his fullness and there we shall rejoice and feast with him and there the lord's people will enjoy his presence forever but but a simple and a little uh, a reminder of that he welcomes lost sinners uh, one cannot have really a more simple way of showing acceptance uh, if somebody invites you to their house uh, and invites you to a meal, uh, that you are, as it were, part of their family or sharing with them, uh, you are accepted by them, and uh, they are happy to have you sitting down uh, with, with them at a meal. And so it is with the Lord. Though, yes, we must, he is holy, yet he is wonderfully gracious and will receive sinners to himself. We must come in the way is given by believing and trusting in him, but he welcomes uh, lost sinners and welcomes lost sinners to himself. His salvation is free. Don't believe the church has ever, in all its corruption in one way or another with the Lord's Supper, has ever asked, literally asked people for money for it. It is always free. Uh, and it is for those simply whose trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no uh, qualification other than that our faith is real and true and that we show it in one sense by not uh, continuing in very uh, great sins, drunkenness and adultery and all those sorts of things uh, that the Lord tells us. But other than that, if we are sorry for our sin and we trust in the Savior, we may come 
and as it were, sit down with the Lord, sit down with his people, and partake uh, of uh, the bread and the cup. It is a wonderful picture uh, that the Lord provides everything. Uh, it is free, those glorious appeals and verses in Isaiah chapter 55. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Salvation is free. It is not at our cost. Christ has borne that cost. He, it is the bread and the, the cup are to symbolize his body and blood that he has shed and he has broken for, for us uh, and that we come freely to him. Uh, all he asks is that we are willing to leave our sin uh, and for him to change us, to give us new life. But his appeal to everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, come ye by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Uh, and wonderful, glorious, simple picture uh, that he uh, has given himself. He has provided it all and all salvation is given to us freely in him. Another simple thing. It is everything that we need. Now, I know bread and uh, wine in one sense are not a, a full uh, diet but they are food and drink. Uh, we need both, don't we? We need food and we need drink. If we go without one or the other, eventually we shall die. But the Lord uh, provides both. And he, it's a simple picture that he is sufficient for all that we need. If we have the Lord Jesus Christ, we have everything. We don't need to add anything more. We don't need to add our own our works, our own efforts to get us into heaven. If we have Christ, he is everything. We don't need any other Mary or, or, or anybody else. Uh, all we have, if we have the Lord Jesus Christ, we have all that we need for eternal life. And we have eternal life in him. Bread in one sense is a wonderfully uh, nutritious food. A wine or bread, grape juice in the same way, strengthening. Uh, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need nothing more. The old watchword, one of the old watchwords of the Reformation, Christ alone, he alone saves and uh, he alone is sufficient. Faith in him, we but come to him and put our trust in him. Uh, with all our hearts, we shall be saved wholly and completely. And in that sense also, we express our dependence upon him. We come and we eat and we say, Lord, uh, I am trusting in you. I'm depending upon you. You are all sufficient for all that I need. Now, these things are set forth and could probably say a lot more, but all I will add, just one more thing. He says, this cup is the New Testament in my blood or in other places, and it could be translated the same, the new covenant in my blood. The Lord, when he shed his blood, he sealed the covenant sealed what is called the covenant of grace, which means that he pledged himself, God pledged himself to give salvation to any and to all who would put their trust in him. And it would be salvation that would never be taken away. Like you might buy a house and you go to the, to the lawyer and you transfer the documents, you pay the money, and the documents, the, the 
the deeds of the house are given to you so that you know it is legally yours forever. Uh, well, until you die, but, uh, uh, and so it is. He sealed uh, that covenant, one might say illegally, a binding agreement that God would save lost sinners who put their trust in the Savior. And it is forever for all those who put their trust in him. Uh, we don't tempt the Lord. Certainly we watch and we guard ourselves and we seek to walk with him. And as the Bible says, make our calling and election sure. But it is his promise that we depend upon. His blood that was shed that has purchased forgiveness for us. And we may rely wholly upon him. I won't go on anymore. A simple picture. And if you are sitting one day and you have not yet as believed on the Savior, uh, sitting and you're watching these things, think upon these things. Think that it is a, a picture, as it were, for you to ponder and to remember that Christ has come to suffer and to die for sinners and that you may come to him, you may freely uh, believe in him and receive forgiveness and salvation. And uh, may he help us all that our trust would be in him, that we might know uh, him as our saviour and as our Lord. Amen. The last hymn is number 474. Come ye sinners, poor and wretched. <laughs>